What's up, guys? Meteorologist Jonathan Keg is with you, and we have a very extreme weather pattern on tap that's really going to impact probably 90% of the country over the next week and into next weekend. We're going to start things off in this video with historic heat coming to Florida in parts of the southeast. All-time records could be broken in terms of the month of February. And then on the flip side of that, we have extreme cold in the western plains and right smack dab in the middle of that with this crazy temperature divide we're talking about a really big snow and ice storm getting going and then another round of severe weather is going to be possible in parts of the deep south as we get to the middle part of this next upcoming work week here so there is a lot to get to we are going to start with florida and the reason why Florida and parts of the Southeast is going to be so, so hot. Big chunk of high pressure going to build across the parts of the Southwest Atlantic, Northern Caribbean. And what this is going to do, number one, is force all that tropical warmth back into the Southeast corner of the lower 48. But these big ridges of high pressure in the mid-levels of our atmosphere also have heating capabilities of their own under high pressure air sinks and when air sinks it warms and it dries up so this is also going to contribute to the likely drought or abnormally dry conditions that have sprung up in parts of the florida peninsula and southeast to expand and worsen over the next week or so also going to help to increase that wildfire threat this is of course wildfire season for this part of the country when things start to dry out of course when we have this heat there is a little humidity coming with it, but it's not like that middle of summer humidity. Nonetheless, it is going to be really hot. I don't use the word historic lightly, but what is coming down the pipeline could be unprecedented in terms of the heat, especially for the Florida Peninsula. Next few days are going to be warm. That is within the kind of bell curve, if you will. But once we get into Wednesday, that's going to be our first run of 90 degree heat in the Orlando area. At the Orlando International Airport, it has reached 90 only three times in history, dating back to 1892. The forecast here has three 90 degree plus days. So again, when you talk about the definition of historic or unprecedented, that's it. That is it right there. So some big time stuff. And again, this can be explained from the weather pattern. We typically see contrast in temperature like this during a La Nina winter, which we are in this big ridge in the south and east. But climate change also has a footprint on this. It's likely enhancing. It's, it's kind of like this weather pattern on steroids a little bit. So again, just keep that in mind. There is a reason for it meteorologically but it's being enhanced in all likelihood because of the warming climate. The water temperatures in the Gulf and off the Southwest Atlantic are way above normal as well, helping to enhance that. So again, what makes this so historic and again, potentially unprecedented, we've only seen 90 degrees in Orlando three times in history. It hasn't happened since way back in 1962. It happened twice that year. Also, it happened in 1935, but that is three times since 1892 and again on that seven day forecast that you just saw there we have three days really four to five if you go over the next eight days where we could be touching or exceeding 90 degrees we won't get the earliest occurrence of 90 in orlando that happened back in 1935 on february 15th but if we do hit 90 at the orlando international airport we will likely, we will get the second earliest occurrence of 90 degrees. Again, anything that happens before February 24th, we will take the top spot. But wait, there's more on the history front. First of all, if you are finding this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like to get weather information, consider hitting that subscribe button if you are watching it on the YouTube channel. When you're talking about historic, again, that is a word that I don't throw around lightly, okay? I want you to know that. If you've watched this channel, if you know me from watching this channel, you know I don't hype things up, okay? So I want to be clear about that. But what the deal with this is, 
It's something that potentially never happened before. Again, the longevity of this heat coming to the south and east and the intensity. Look at this. 91 is the forecast on Thursday. The hottest it's ever been in recorded history. Again, I'm using recorded because we only have data going back to 1892. It's a lot of data. Nonetheless, maybe it's happened before prior to weather being recorded. Anyway, the forecast was 91. The record is 90. In Melbourne, 88 is the forecast. 92 is our all-time high record temperature for February. Sanford, we're at 90 on Thursday. 89 is our all-time record high for February. Leesburg, 90 is also the forecast. The record is 88, set back in 2022. Now, I will say about Leesburg, our climate records don't go back as far, and that is why our record is a little more recent. I believe they only go back to the 1950s, so there's not as much data for Leesburg. All the others, late 1800s. While this is happening, we're talking about an extreme divide in temperatures that will eventually go into making this huge storm that is going to steal weather headlines across the country. As we're talking about this heat surging into the southeast, look at this, Nashville, we're pushing 80 degrees. Eventually into Roanoke, we're going to get there. This is now Wednesday. Okay, this is Wednesday of the upcoming week. That's going to be Wednesday, February 22nd. We're talking one degrees above for a high temperature in Rapid City, nine above in Fargo, but it's 90 in Orlando. Watch what happens as we get into Thursday. That is even more extreme. I think Thursday morning in the upper Midwest and Northern Plains, overnight lows could be 20 to 30 degrees below zero in this purple area. We have this fast forwarded out till four o'clock. So these are the daytime high temperatures rather than the overnight lows. But the point I'm trying to make is it's six below zero. That's the actual air temperature, not the wind, where it is 91. Again, that could be the record-setting day, the all-time record-setting day in Orlando. As you might imagine, when you get these big temp differences in temperature, that's what creates the weather temperature differences. You get a big storm. Watch what happens. We're going to start this on Tuesday. And there's already some snow ongoing from western Minnesota through the Dakotas back into Montana, Idaho, the west coast of the U.S. We watch this system really start to materialize late Tuesday night and then into Wednesday afternoon. I mentioned earlier in the video about not only the snow side but the severe side, and that would come on Wednesday. You see that yellow stripe there? So we're really looking towards the deep south. Once again, under the gun for severe weather. So that's going to be right in this general area on Wednesday and then potentially even sliding even further east on Thursday. Look at all of the heavy snow, though, through the Mountain West and into the Upper Midwest. This is now Wednesday night into early Thursday morning. This is going to be about 2 o'clock in the morning. Look at all that heavy snow through the Twin Cities. We could use some snow up there into the Dakotas. Rapid City, Sioux Falls, Chicago. We're going to miss out, I think, on the snow at this point. Rain maybe changing to some ice. That pink there represents the mixed precip. So we're going to have to watch out for potential ice storm right where the air masses kind of collide. And then that heavy snow continuing. Toronto getting in on some snow. We've had a very terrible winter in terms of snow. Not been much. Speaking of terrible winter, the I-95 corridor, we've not seen much snow. We're missing out on this one, too. It's going to be rain, maybe changing to some mixed precip on the back end. Boston, we could see some snow. That heavy snow then works its way into the Canadian Maritimes, into Nova Scotia, into Newfoundland. And then there's some of that snow changing to mix in Toronto. This is on Thursday evening now. And then moving up into Montreal, into Ontario, into um, parts of Maine as well so there is a lot going on and again to say this is an extreme weather pattern is an understatement again when you're looking at this from a weather versus climate no one event okay can be blamed on climate change okay so hurricane ian for example was not created from climate change the hurricane would have been there whether or not the earth was warming okay but what climate change did have a hand in with Ian was it made it a wetter storm. So it likely would not have been as wet 
a warmer atmosphere can hold more moisture. That's one of the reasons why it's going to be so warm in Orlando and Florida and the southeast because there's going to be a little humidity with this. When there's more moisture in the atmosphere, the temperatures don't back off. So it is important to note, okay, I want to make this clear that yes, we would have been very warm anyway because this is because of the weather pattern. We had that big subtropical ridge overhead. That is typical of a La Nina winter. We were expecting the south and southeast to be dry and warm because of La Nina. But again, it's also important to note that a warming atmosphere likely putting this weather pattern on steroids just a little bit. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Again, if you enjoyed this, if you found this helpful, please consider subscribing. Certainly giving this a thumbs up would also help. And we will catch you next time. Stay cool in the south. Stay warm and be careful up in the northwest. Again, a lot of heavy snow coming on the pipeline in the upper Midwest and northern plains. Have a great rest of your weekend.